so we're going to start with chapter 2, section 1, which is separable equations. And so separable equation is written as follows. So dy dx is equal to some function f that only depends on x multiplied by some function g that only depends on y. And the reason that it's separable is because we can separate the two functions with their respective differentials. So we can rewrite this equation as g of uh, dy over g of y is equal to f of x, sorry, f of x dx. Now, now that we have our functions, our y's with our y's and our x's with our x's, then we can just integrate both sides. So integrating the left and the right. There's not much that I can do with the left just because we don't know what our g of y is. So I'm just going to leave this down here. But then, with our right-hand side, you should remember from calculus, integral of fx dx, we can write as big fx, and then I want to stress this plus c. So when you're solving this ODE, you're going to get a family of solutions, because you're integrating in order to find your solution. So, if I don't tell you initially where, uh, what my function's value is going to be at a certain point, you have to include this plus c because you found a family of solutions. I can't stress that enough. If you don't include this, you're only really including one solution when the answer is an infinite amount of solutions. So let's look at an example. Do y dx is equal to x squared over 1 plus y squared. Getting our y's and our x's together, we'll have 1 plus y squared dy is equal to x squared dx. If I integrate both sides, I'll get that integral of 1 dy is just y, plus integral of y squared is y cubed over 3. And then on the right hand side, same thing, x cubed over 3. And then I'm forgetting something, which is my plus c. And so this is the solution to this ODE. Congratulations. So, remember the plus C, because I didn't tell you um, what particular solution I'm looking for. So, this is the family of solutions that solve this differential equation. So, note, again, dy dx is known as an ODE. dy dx is equal to x squared over 1 plus y squared is known as an ODE. On the other hand, if I tell you that y of 0 is equal to 7, I'm telling you that at x equals 0, my function is going to equal 7. So I've thus imposed an initial condition on my uh, differential equation, which means that I'm going to find one particular solution instead of a family. And this is known as an initial value problem, henceforth known as an IVP. The general method for solving any IVP is to first solve the ODE, so don't worry about the initial condition for now. Just try to find the general solution and the, the set of solutions that solve the ordinary differential equation, and then apply the initial condition in order to solve for that arbitrary constant C. And then one last time, IVPs do not have arbitrary constants because you are solving for a particular solution. If I give you an IVP, I don't expect that there's going to be a C in your final answer. So let's look at a, an example in order to see how this all plays out. 2y dx is equal to x squared times e to the minus 3y, and at x equals 2, my function is equal to 0. So, getting my y's and my x's together, I'll have e to the 3y is equal to x squared dx. So, I just divide by e minus 3y and multiply by dx, and then I need to integrate both sides. So, if you remember, the integral of e ax dx is nothing more than 1 over a e to the ax. And you can have a plus c, but since I'm dealing with the y, I'll just deal with the plus c on the x side. So applying this, this is just 1 third e to the 3y is equal to, the right hand side is just a simple polynomial, so x cubed over 3 plus c. Now, I've solved the ODE, which is good. It's a step in the right direction. But now I need to apply my initial condition 
in order to find my particular solution. So whenever you see this, you should think, okay, I need to plug in 2 for x and plug in 0 for y. So applying that here, I'll have 1 third e to the 3 times 0 is equal to 2 cubed over 3 plus c. e to the 0 is nothing other than 1, so this is 1 third is equal to 2 cubed is 8, so 8 over 3 plus c. Therefore, my c is just minus 7 thirds. Great. So this means that I can write my solution as 1 third e to the 3y is equal to x cubed over 3 minus 7 thirds. And this is a perfectly valid final answer. However, I want to note something. This is known as an implicit solution. So what this means is I'm not giving you the solution explicitly as y is equal to fx. There's clearly something happening to my variable y, but it's okay because the relation between y and x is preserved. So if I want to solve for this explicitly, that's not too hard to do here. All you have to do is multiply both sides by 3. So this will give you e to the 3y is equal to x cubed minus 7. If I take the natural log of both sides, I'll get 3y is equal to natural log of x cubed minus 7. And then I can divide by 3. So y is equal to 1 third natural log of x cubed minus 7. And if you really want to impress me, y is equal to natural log of x cubed minus 7, take the cube root. And either one of these is an explicit solution. Because I'm giving you whatever y is as strictly a function of f of x. There's nothing funny happening to y on the left hand side of the equation. And so as a um, general rule of thumb, on a test or quiz, if they don't specify to write implicit or explicit, if it's easy to solve for the explicit solution, go ahead and leave it as a, go ahead and try to solve for explicit. Um, but if it's very difficult to solve for the explicit solution, it's okay to leave the to uh, leave the implicit solution. So yeah, in the next section we'll be talking about first order integrating factor, and that should get you started on uh, first order equations.